Let's practice another example in which we're going to have a composite bar, which is a, uh, exposed to temperature, but the composite bar has two materials, so as it expands with temperature or shrinks with temperature, it's going to uh, have warpage or bending. So, well, first we go to pre-process with prep 7, and we define an element type. So I want to pick element type reference number 183 which is a 2D structural element type. Let's take a look at the description and help documentation. So it is a higher order 2D structural element type. It has degrees of freedom UX and UY because it's 2D, so it doesn't move in the Z direction. And by default, it models or it meshes in uh, rectangular element shapes, but if the geometry doesn't allow, it could, use, it could be used for tetrahedral or degenerate element shapes. The material properties or degrees of freedom again here is UX, UY. And if we turn on key point or key option three to six, it would also have rotation about Y direction, but we don't need it here. It doesn't have real constant except for key option three equals three. And the material properties would be EX, EY, EZ, basically the Young's moduli in three directions. Um, we, call, we could also have Poisson ratios and we also give ALPX which is a coefficient of thermal expansion, or also we could use CTEX. So we're gonna need coefficient of thermal expansions for this problem. So let's take a look at the key options. Key option three, actually, the uh, behavior of the element could be selected as plane stress, axisymmetric, or plane strain. For the purpose of just practicing how to use key options, I'm gonna pick, um, plane strain for no particular reason besides actually just practicing. So after selecting that, I can say key option and the reference number for the element is one. I picked element at one, key option three, and the value is two. If I take a look at that in here in pre-processing element type and key option three, as you can see, it's plane strain, which is not the default plane stress. So I can do that. Now I have to define two material models because I have two materials with two different CTEs. The first material model, MP, EX, Young's modulus, one, I give um, 2E11. And for that material model, I give EX one point 27 for now or actually sorry that was wrong so I have to redo it say MP PR XY 1 and give it 0.27 this is the Poisson ratio now I want to give the coefficient of thermal expansion so I give MP ALPX for the material model 1 and give 12E minus 6 just as a, as a value. Now if I come to material models, I can see the first material model is selected for me or created for me. Linear uh, elastic and I have those values and the thermal expansion of coefficient or thermal coefficient of ex expansion coefficient. Then I can say MPEX, which is for the second material model. So I give two in here and let's say 50 or gigapascals, then Poisson ratio for the second material model. So I put two there and give 0.3. And let's give a different coefficient of thermal expansion. Let's say 18 E minus six. Now I have to create my solid model. I'm gonna create that using key points and then lines and then areas. The first key point I wanna create is at point zero zero. And the second one is at point one zero. So if I move this, I have two key points there. Now I wanna create a key point at point X zero, but Y point one. That's that. The second key point or the fourth key point actually is going to be 
at x1, y of 0.1. There. Now I want to create two key points and negative y directions. So go back here and create this key point, key point 5 at negative 0.1 in the y direction. And finally, this one. So I have six key points. I want to create a key point within or a line between key points one and two, and another line between two and four, then between four and three, and then three and one. So it's going to be three and one. So I have one closed loop for one of the areas that I want to create. Then I have to create lines, actually three more lines for the second area. So I say line between two and six, line between six and five, and then line between five and one. Now if I do pnum comma one or line comma one, do l plot. These are my line numbers that I want to use to create areas. So I use AL, area with lines, and I use or select areas 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I want a second area, which is in here. But, but notice that I'm going to use the same line number 1, which is the line which is common between the two areas. And I have to use the same line number if I had two lines here and I created that. Answers will not see them as a uh, attached or two attached areas, then I have to glue them together. But right now, because I have a line there, I can say AL 1, 5, 6, and 7, which is defined by 1, 5, 6, and 7. Now I have two areas. If I do PNAM area 1 and do a plot. I see that I have area 1 and area 2 selected for me or created. So I want to mesh my area 1 with material model 1, mat, comma, 1, and give an E size of 0.05, A mesh, short for mesh area, and do A mesh 1. So the first area is meshed for me. It's not the best mesh but let's just go with that right now and then I can say mat comma 2 now a mesh 2 the second area now if I come to plot controls numbering and disable these and say element shapes or element numbering with material numbers and just with the colors I see that I have two types of materials or two different materials in this example, material model one and material model two. Now what I want to do is to fix all these nodes. So I can say n cell s location x zero and plot to just show the plots nodes that are there and say d all all degrees of freedom to zero. All cell, which means select everything, and then do E plot. So I have that. Now I want to come here into solution, basically finish this and go to solution with dash or backslash solu. And first I want to give a reference temperature, T ref, which is basically um, the temperature at which stresses and strains are zero. I give that to zero for now. And then I apply a constant temperature to all the nodes. So I say BF, body force, all, all the nodes, temperature, which is TMP, and let's give a 80 degree or 100 degree for now to make it radical. And I can say solve. The solution is done. I can go to post processing backslash post one and do PLN sol short for plot nodal solution show me the displacement and vector sum 
as you can see, because of the temperature, because of the difference in coefficient of thermal expansion or CTE of the two models, as, as a result of the temperature being applied to this composite plate, the plate bent in the y direction. But because I didn't have adequate number of elements in this model, it, it's not shown as best as I expected. One thing I can do, if I do eplot for now, and come to here and say path, and give a name for it, path one, with two points. So I want to create a path between this point and that point, and um, apply or map deformation or displacements in the y direction to that and plot it. So if I do that, I can do p path. The first point of the path is going to be at location 0, 0, 0. So I, here I skipped the node number because I don't know the node number in that location. Then I want to find the second point, so p path, which means the second point of the path, and that is going to be at x equals 1, y and z are 0, so it's going to be there. So if I do p def, which is short for uh, define something for a path, I can give any label, disp underscore y, and the item is u and the component is y, and I want to say avg for averaging. And then I want to say pl path disp y. This is the deformation of the path um, or of that uh, line with respect to the length of the composite plate. So here we uh, tried an example, a very simple example of a plate with composite materials or two different materials with different coefficient of thermal expansion and applied temperature and saw its deformation with respect to temperature.